Now, rumours are swirling that Princess Beatrice and Eugenie have been keeping a somewhat lower profile uh, because they may have potentially enhanced roles in the future. The think tank Civitas has warned that the monarchy risks abolishing itself by stealth if it doesn't add to the roster of working royals. Would it make sense for Beatrice and Eugenie to officially start work as working royals? I mean, that's something that's, that's you know, stranger things would have happened, should I say. Um, and we have to remember that this, the, the Megxit, effectively, the exit of the Sussexes from, you know, the royal family wasn't just a loss in terms of, you know, them losing literal working members of the royal family, but you also lost resources and assets. The, the, the royal family engages in many public engagements throughout the year. I mean... You know, Princess Anne is, is, is the, the hardest working royal. Um, she engages in hundreds of engagements every year. There is work that needs to be done uh, to represent this country and, 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 and the Commonwealth. And by having fewer resources to do it, you do stretch other working members of the royal family quite thin, especially when they have families and other you know, sort of personal uh, commitments. So it does make sense that uh, Princess Eugenie and Beatrice will eventually be brought into the fold. I think that that's something that would uh, actually be quite, quite beneficial to the king. We know how uh, you know Prince Andrew has effectively crashed out of the royal family in disgrace, um, and it's his own fault. Um, but the question is, should his daughters be punished for it? At the end of the day, the royal family is a, is a much bigger than, than one or two, or in, in this case, three disgraced members um, exiting it in a very unfashionable way. Um, so I can actually see that happening. I mean, they do a lot of charity work and, and um, sort of a lot of public engagements in their own right. Uh, and and it's, it's not something that would be alien to them to actually do things on, on behalf of the king. And I think they'd be primed to do it. And I, I definitely think if that were to be the case, the Sussexes could learn a lot from, from Princess Eugenie and Princess Beatrice. Now, on to the King, and, and despite recent attempts at reconnection with the Sussexes, the rift seems to have deepened over some of those allegations made in Endgame. Look, we understand the King is taking a, a cautious approach moving forward. Is that right? Yes, I mean, the, we, we know from reports um, within the royal family that the king is keen on some sort of reconciliation. This is a man in his mid-70s. He only has two children. He, he's obviously, you know, nearing the end of his life or at the point where you start to reflect on things. Uh, he's not happy about the situation between the Sussexes and the royal family or the fact that this rift it risks, really risks calcifying in this way. But, you know, it, it's very hard to be, for him to justify trying to bring the Sussexes back into the fold, especially given the latest allegations made in, in Omid Scobie's book Endgame, where, you know, you have the likes of the king and, and, and Princess Catherine effectively being humiliated by being called racist without having the right to reply. Uh, and, and I can imagine, you know, just getting on with it is, is very difficult when you have someone assassinating your character in this way. So it will be very, it's, it, it will be a, such a tightrope for, for, it is such a tightrope for the king to, 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 to walk, to try and, you know, have some sort of relationship with his, his son Harry and, and his family, but also try and maintain the peace uh, within his family. I mean, we heard reports that the Sussexes hinted that they would be open to receiving an invitation to Sandringham this year and even uh, wanting to attend. But actually, it's not been clear that any invitation has been extended to them, um, which I guess is, is another reality that's going to hit home. I'm personally very sceptical um, of whether th there's any going back from this. I don't think uh, Prince William wants to have very much to do with the Sussexes. I think there's also the very real threat of the lack of privacy. Um, we can't trust that there's not going to be some sort of Netflix camera in the corner or, uh, you know, some hidden microphone for all the Sussexes complaining about a lack of privacy. Um, and even Prince Harry's recent case where he was awarded over 100 thousand pounds in, in a phone hacking scandal you know it's very likely that other members of the royal family have faced a similar ordeal and for for one of your own for someone within your own circle to effectively be doing the same thing that he's accused others of doing um, by publishing memoirs and going to netflix and 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 publishing secrets of the family in such a tawdry and and and, and uncouth manner you know how can king charles bring them back in the fold there would be no peace for anyone you just it's, you, it'd be like bringing the enemy within and it, it would be a deeply uncomfortable experience so i know king charles is very cognizant of that and unfortunately this is what he's going to have to face for i suspect many more years and lastly there have been extra invitations sent for christmas at sandringham but not the ones that you might expect esther who's coming so we know that uh, Queen uh, Camilla's children and her grandchildren are coming to Sandringham. And the king has been very deliberate in actually uh, integrating uh, Queen Camilla's family into the fold. Uh, we know that... Uh, 
you know, she, they, they, her grandkids and uh, played a prominent role in the King's coronation earlier this year. Um, and again, the juxtaposition is quite an incredible thing to see. You have the King's own son, uh, Prince Harry, and his, his wife and, and children that are really have nothing to do with the royal family in any significant way. But you have the Queen consorts, uh, children and grandchildren really being integrated into the fold. Um, and it's, it's quite an interesting thing to see because I can't see this, this now status quo changing at any point. Unfortunately, this is how things are going to be for the foreseeable future. And, and it's really, I, I suspect it's something that's causing the king much distress because it doesn't make sense for him to not have his own son and his own grandchildren there, um, but to continue to, to, to bring his wife's uh, kids and grandkids into the fold. It's, it's just quite an interesting dynamic going on there. Esther Kraku, as always, thank you so much for joining the show and for your observations. Uh, no doubt we'll catch up shortly.